The lady holds her hands high. The maid served her to put on her clothes, but never dared to look at her. Look at me, Sue. Sue couldn't look at Miss because of the guilt inside, but she is in love with her, as she calls out to her. At this moment, their affection is seen by Richard, who has just married Miss Maud, but he did not expose the light and retreated silently. At this moment, there is only one last move left in the game of chess. The three of them are temporarily sheltered in a farmhouse in the countryside. All they have to do is wait for Maud to go mad before they can send her to the loony bin and get their hands on her money. Sue watches as Maud's virginity is taken by the hypocritical Richard. Maud is slowly becoming emaciated. She has no appetite and is nervous every day. She doesn't want Sue to groom her. Sue is heartbroken to see Maud falling into Richard's scheme, but is powerless to stop it. The only thing that would make Ma happy is to dress Sue in her most exquisite dress as she always did it. The manner that she took out her favorite brooch and carefully pinned it on Sue's chest. She dressed Sue over and over again with great care. She wouldn't even let Sue take off her dress. <gasps> I knew it. That color just matches your hair, your eyes. You're quite a beauty. <laughs> but then the doctor from the asylum arrives after receiving many letters from Richard. Sue was apprehensive. She knew that the doctor had come to take Maud to the asylum. It's not that she didn't want to go there to save Maud, but Richard's numerous warnings only made her give up. She described to the doctor, as Richard had asked her to do, how Maud was not herself these days. Sue says that Maud is kind and caring, and asked the doctor to put Maud in a place where no one could harm her. Sue is having a hard time containing her breakdown. The doctor even had to calm her down. Once the doctor understood the situation, he told Richard that Maud would be admitted to the insane asylum tomorrow afternoon. So Richard told Maud that they would be leaving for London tomorrow afternoon and start a whole new life. They pack their bags again. Sue looks and slips the pearl gloves into Maud's chest when she's not looking and they boarded the coach for the journey. Sue's heart was on edge for she knew that the direction they were heading would be the abyss that would imprison Maud forever. But the moment the door opened, Sue was the one who was betrayed by everyone. They called Sue Richard's wife and dragged her into the madhouse. Sue screams that she is not Richard's wife. Sue struggles desperately to explain the misunderstanding. But the doctors think it's just a symptom of her imaginary illness. Maud, sitting in the car, doesn't say a word, just looks at Sue quietly. At this moment, Sue realizes that the real lamb to the slaughter is herself. Maud pretends to be the maid and says that her miss. No! No! Maud! Maud! Rivers is pathetic. Poor Sue thought she knew Maud. She thought Maud was pure and innocent, but Sue has no idea how complicated Maud's story is. The girl grew up in an orphanage. She was forced to read adult books at the age of eight and was adopted by her hypocrite uncle Mr. Lily. Thus began an even more unfortunate life. Mr. Lily has an unspeakable fetish. He likes to collect all kinds of strange books. From the age of 12, Ma was taught by Mr. Lily these horrible knowledge until she became numb. She was accustomed to these obscene words. Her reading performances were hidden underground with Mr. Lily's library for men to fantasize and enjoy. Her dark life was shattered by the arrival of Richard. Richard wants her inheritance. But Maud is aloof and unapproachable. He has to confess what he came here for. He says that Mr. Lily is an evil man. He originally wanted to seduce Maud and get her fortune. But when he saw Maud, he knew he would not succeed. At this moment, Richard wanted to cooperate with Maud by offering her freedom. I think you long for it. Richard's plan is like opening a window in Maud's hellish captivity. She longed to be free of her shackles and to breathe freely. So she agrees to cooperate with him. Two, a pickpocket from London, became her new maid. She also becomes her scapegoat. And the letter of recommendation hand delivered by Sue contains Richard's instructions. Here is the evil little fingersmith who's going to make us rich. Remember, she has to become you and you her. But Ma gradually gets used to Sue's warmth and energy. In her eyes, Sue is no longer just a cat's paw in an evil scheme. She quickly realizes what this emotion is. After reading obscene texts for so long, Richard sees something wrong in Maud's eyes and immediately takes her aside. Let go of me. I've lost heart for this. Oh, I lost it to a wretched little finger smear. She'd laugh in your face if she knew. If I told her, you mustn't. Since Maud has developed special feelings for Sue, so she was completely controlled by Richard. Maud sneaks into the library the night she escapes from the manor. 
she slashes the poison that corrupts her soul to pieces with a knife. In exchange for a moment of inner respite after they arrive at the farmhouse in the countryside, Richard slashed his arm and dripped blood onto the bed. It would become a disguise for their wedding night. By the time the doctor from the insane asylum arrived, Richard took Ma's wedding ring and let her meet the doctor alone as well. And that's one of poor Mrs. Rivers' fancies. Ever since her wedding night, she's made up these stories. We can observe again Sue's sudden emotional outburst when she is questioned by the doctor. These completely convince the doctor that she is completely insane. Sue is then ruthlessly taken away by the doctors of the asylum. Sue is buried in the asylum with Maud's name and story. Sue's disguise and betrayal led her into Maud's conspiracy. They both loved each other, but they also betray each other hypocritically. But Maud escapes from the manor and is led into another den of thieves. She comes to the show's biggest conspirator, Mrs. Saxby. Good boy. These two women are known as Geminate Flowers. One is an aristocratic scheming lady. The other is a hypocritical maid of the lower class. Their story is treacherous and conjures up a tale of intrigue and love at their fingertips. Sue is framed and imprisoned in an insane asylum. The first day the doctors put her in a water cage to keep her awake. The next day, she is forcibly drugged to calm her down. Her life is punctuated by daily verbal abuse and beatings. Sue struggled to prove that she was sane, but this seemed impossible to achieve in the asylum. Sue has no choice but to take on her false identity. I am Mrs. Maud Rivers. This is truly remarkable. But just as her plan is about to succeed, the doctor proposes a little test to get her to write her own name. But poor Sue can't read at all. Sue's last hope of escaping is dashed. She can only live in the asylum with a vengeful heart. On the other hand, Maud comes to Lance Street and discovers a big secret. No, you weren't born in the asylum, dear. You was born here. It turns out that Maud is the real daughter of Mrs. Saxby. Sue's mother was trying to escape the control of her brother, Mr. Lily. She gave birth to Sue here, but Mr. Lily found this place soon after. So Mrs. Saxby swapped the two children. Mrs. Saxby gave her real daughter, Maud, to Mr. Lily, thus one of the girls became a lady, the other became a little thief, and Mrs. Saxby wove a huge plan to bring her daughter back to her, because Sue's mother split her inheritance in half between the two girls. Her real inheritance was, and Mrs. Saxby was to receive the entire inheritance. Thanks to your help. What have I done? Some time passed, Sue finally gains the trust of the guards through her disguise. Sue managed to escape from the asylum one night. She finally returned to Lance Street after a long journey. The familiarity of it made her feel alive. I'm Susan Trinder! But when she came downstairs and looked at Maud standing by the window, her psychological defenses collapsed at that moment. She rushes into the room and confronts Maud. It's not your fortune enough. It's what you did to me enough. Put me in a mad. You got to put me there. I wish I had. The two of them then went into a furious struggle. Mrs. Suxby struggles to calm Sue down with her lies. But then Richard returns. He doesn't want the whole plan to fail because of Sue's arrival. The two of them are arguing and in a mess. Maud accidentally kills Richard in the confusion. The police soon arrive. Mrs. Suxby takes Maud's place to protect her daughter. And these girls here are innocent girls and never armed. No one. We're back to the familiar guillotine. Only this time Sue is going to see Mrs. Suxby leave this world with her own eyes. And while Sue was going through her belongings, she came across the will. Sue finally learns about her own life. Sue returns to the manor after learning of Mr. Lily's death and sitting in the sunlight is Maud, whom she was once attracted to and hated with all her heart. Love and hate are both intertwined in their hearts, but that's why their relationship cannot be broken. As they panic, capers fall on the table. They both knelt down to clean it up together. When Sue saw the unfamiliar characters, she asked Maud what was written on it. Full of words say how I want you. I love you.